Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. This is Vench, an international teacher who worked in the Philippines, United Kingdom, and United States. For today's video, I'm going to share to you some tips as well as questions and answers during J1 visa embassy interview because I know that this time of the year is the hiring season and I know that most of you have job offers already and the next step would be the J1 visa embassy interview. Any type of visa interviews is very nerve-wracking. That's why I believe that preparation and readiness is the key. So I hope you're going to learn something from our video today. So the first step that I wanted to give is to make sure that everything is ready before going to the embassy. That means that you prepared all the documents that you need to bring, as well as that you're mentally prepared as well and physically prepared as well so for the documents that you will be bringing most of it they will not really ask for it the consul will not really ask for it but sometimes out of the blue they will actually be asking for like you know documentations or proof so it's still best to have all of those documents with you what are those documents of course your appointment confirmation your DS-160, your service receipt, your DS-2019, which, which is the most important, and of course, documents relating to your degree and the job that you will be working in the United States of America. That means you need to have your current resume, you need to have a certificate of employment, job offer, transcript of records, both local and foreign transcript. You also need to have your diploma, your birth certificate, your passport, of course, your passport ID, your marriage certificate if you're married. You also need to bring with you something that has to do with your home ties, like bank statement, driver's license, or, you know, a house and lot title. So all of those documents, most of the teachers, what they do is they put it inside a folder or an envelope and it has labels so that it's easier for them to take out if in case a consul will be asking them for it next thing of course it's very important for you to be consistent with your answers it needs to be based on the documents that you have most importantly it needs to be based on the ds 2019 document because most of the answers will be coming from that document so ds 2019 will be coming from your sponsor it will be given to you by your visa sponsor it's one to two page document and has information about you and your school district information like your name your date of birth the name of the school in the united states what would be your salary what grade level will you be teaching and so much more so make sure that you review that before your embassy interview next it is very important for you to answer the question with all honesty and of course, when you answer a question, it needs to be short and brief. And say, for example, if they ask you a direct question or a closed-ended question, you need to answer it with a yes or a no. Remember that during the interview, you have a limited time. So the consul will be asking questions in a quick manner and they need you to respond as well um, in a in a quick manner as well so if they ask you questions answerable by a yes or no just answer yes or no depending on the questions if they ask why or if they ask you to explain then you explain it but do not provide them long answers avoid doing that okay so and of course next do not give them an impression that you will stay longer or you will stay beyond the program or the teacher exchange program so the teacher exchange program or j1 visa program is for three years you can have an extension for another two years but not, that's not sure yet so during the interview your mindset should be following the years of the program which is only for three years so make sure do not give them an impression that you will stay longer because if you do that they will deny your application okay so now what are the common questions that will come out during the interview the first question that they will ask normally and i i remember this during my interviews as well this is normally the first question during visa interviews what will you do in the united states or what is the purpose of the travel so in your case since it's a j1 visa you can say you can just say um i will be teaching what subject and then to what school so you can say, I will be teaching science to blank high school 
located in Arizona. That's it. And then the next question, if you didn't tell them the location, sometimes they would tell you, they would ask you um, which state you will be working or what is the physical address where you will be staying. So make sure to know the address beforehand so that you can give the response directly to the consul. Next question, they will base it on your DS 2019. So they will ask you questions like, how much is your salary? So in your DS 2019 and in your job offer, you will see it there. Uh, most of the time, it's a yearly salary. So for example, if it's $50,000, then you give it to them. You say $50,000, nothing more. Um, and then they're going to ask you questions as well. If you have immediate family or relative in the United States of America, you have to be very honest, of course, especially if it's your immediate family, you have... Let's say, for example, a sibling, you have your parents in the United States, make sure to say yes. If you do not have rel immediate family, you say no, and they do not have any follow-up question. If you say yes, though, they will have follow-up questions, such as uh, where do they stay? So you need to ask questions from your, your family about it so that you would know how to answer or what is their current status or if they have a job. So just be prepared for that. Um, but if you do not have any relatives or immediate family, then you know they will proceed to the next questions afterwards. Then they will also ask you questions um, like, um, how long have you worked as a teacher? Because remember for J-1 visa program, you need to have at least two years of experience. So they need to check whether um, you meet that requirement. So sometimes they would ask you for a proof so you can give your certificate of employment or you can also give um, your verification of experience or in the Philippines, we call it a service record. Sometimes um, they would also ask you if you're still connected with your school in the Philippines or with your current school. Um, you need to make sure that you say yes because of course, as part of the program, um, during the application process, you need to still be connected with your schools in your home country and the certificate of employment is the basis for that one and then they would ask you questions about very important questions like how long do you plan to stay in the united states of america so you can tell them for three years because that's the initial phase of the program and the extension of two years you are not sure yet if you will be given that so you just need to say for three years or for the entire duration of the program which is three years then they would ask you questions like what's your plan after the program so this is a very tricky question um do not insinuate that you will be staying longer in the united states of america because you are not following the rules for the teacher exchange program if you do that and they will deny your application right away so make sure that you will tell them that after the program i will be going back home if they don't ask why, then they, no, there's no need for you to explain. But if they ask why, that's a time that you will answer or you will say that I will be going back home to share my experiences um, about the U.S. culture to my colleagues and to my future students in my home country. Okay, so that's it. Because if you say something that would give them an impression that you wanted to stay longer in the United States of America, again, they will deny your application. And then the last question that they would normally ask is if you know about the two-year rule. Because remember, for J-1 visa, there's a two-year rule or what we call as a 212 rule. In this rule, it states that after the program, you need to stay in the Philippines or stay in your home country for two years. And then after two years, you can go back and participate again in the J-1 visa program. Now, most of the time, these questions are very direct. It's answerable by a yes or no. So make sure that you answer yes. So if they ask you, do you know about the two-year rule? You answer yes. If they will not ask for any explanation, then just stay quiet. But if they ask, um what is it about then you tell them that um, a two-year rule is that after the program you have to stay in your home country for two years to share your experiences and knowledge about the united states and its culture okay so other questions aside from that that would probably uh would probably come out as well is 
they're gonna ask you what subject level will, what subject will you be teaching um, what grade level you know is it elementary or high school um, stuff like that and then what else I guess that's that's probably it any other questions they will just base it on your DS 2019 like you know um, what is your date of birth or birthplace so stuff like that uh, most of the other questions they will base it on your DS 2019 so make sure that you review the DS 2019 form it will be given to you in advance so there's no reason for you um, not to answer questions correctly um, other questions that might come out as well is like how much did you pay to your agency or to your visa sponsor so make sure you know the amount that you pay specifically to your visa sponsor or if you have an agency how much specifically did you pay for your agency so if if there's um other payment for example like the airfare um stuff like that you don't add that to the fees so it's what they're trying to to ask here is your payment specifically for for the agency and payment specifically for your visa sponsor so you just give them the amount and yeah so most important thing also during the interview is you need to be confident um have eye contact and also um if you are bringing your j2 with you your J2 needs to be aware as well that their role of why they wanted to be with you is to support you. So do not say anything that my J2 will be working or stuff like that. The, the purpose of the dependents is for them to support you while you are participating in the program. So if they will ask your J2, why do you want it to go with your wife or husband? Then they need to answer um, to support my husband or we wanted to you know be together during um the program yeah so i guess that's it if you have i hope this helps and if you have questions comments or suggestions you can post it below good luck on your journey and have a good day